really shouldn't use a knife to get toast out of the toaster. That's very dangerous. No, I'm not trying to get the toast out. I'm trying to get the fork out. <laughs> oh. You know, this really irks me. What? What's that? The city alderman who yeah. was indicted for taking kickbacks during a sting operation. What'd you say? Ow! God! This thing is plugged in! I voted for the wrong guy, Ben. That's what I'm saying. What did he do? Well, according to the paper, he had his hand in the till. Oh, he was a uh, huge. Um, he was embezzling money from this from the city. Really? Getting transferring it into his own personal account. Wow, that's uh, that's bad for the city, huh? It's bad for the city. It's bad for uh, it's bad for politics. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I had chosen that path. You know, I I think I could have made a real contribution. You could have uh, as a public servant. Right. But um, what would you do as alderman? Seriously, I mean, just give me your platform. In corruption and city politics. Okay, that's pretty good. I would like to uh, bring crime back to the streets, out of our homes. Crime is in the home now? No, I'd like to clean up uh, the criminal element in the city. Criminal element? Yeah. What decade are you living in? <laughs> what are you, Batman? <laughs> What's your position on uh, nuclear weapons? Hate them. Good. <laughs> Hi, uh, Laura, Laura, is it? Yeah. Yeah, hi. Hi. I'm, uh, Louis C.K. Mm-hmm. Louis? Right. C, just C period, K period. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm supposed to be here now? <sighs> yeah. For the Dr. Katz? Right. Could you take a seat over there, please? You don't want to ask me about my name? No. Okay, just the people usually think it's really weird and they want to... Hear the funny story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, I don't. No, I mean, I don't want to tell it to you. I'm just wondering if you want to hear I wouldn't. <sighs> okay, no, just people usually want to know. Uh, how did, what's up with that, with Laura? How's that, what kind of name is that? Is that like a acronym for something? It's Hungarian. Before I went on the road, I was back home in New York. Mm-hmm. People are so mean there. Like, uh, you know, everywhere you go, there's some kid working behind the counter, and he's like, Ugh, everything's lame. Ugh. So I went to buy a, an ice cream cone at this place. It's like cool ice cream, you know? Right. And there's, uh, you know, all these flavors on the board, and, and I'm looking at them, and, you know, and you're really serious when you're checking out your flavors and going, hmm, now what? I don't like raisins, and, you know. And so there's this flavor called Chips Ahoy. And I'm thinking, that could be a lot of things, Chips Ahoy. Maybe there's a lot of chips in it. Mm. So I go up to the kid, this little snotty kid with the nose earring, and he's like, Ugh. and I went over and I said, uh, excuse me, what is what is Chips Ahoy? And uh, I swear to God, he goes, guess. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. that. What is it? And he says, have you ever heard of Chips Ahoy cookies? Have you ever heard of them? And I was like, well, yeah. And he says, well, they're in vanilla ice cream, duh. And I just, I started crying. You know what I like to do, Dr. Katz, when I'm really bored? Uh, give me a hint. I like to go up to total strangers and just start conversations with them. Yeah. It's really fun. If you ever have nothing to do, just go up to somebody you don't know and just start a conversation. But the fun way to do it, don't start the conversation in the beginning just start it in the middle. Right. You should try it. Just walk up to somebody in a store and just say, yeah, well, how do you think I felt? Or like knock on your neighbor's door and when they answer the door, just go, so that's why he was acting so weird. Yeah. I also like to uh, go shopping a lot. I, I, I like to go to Kmart. Right. The thing I like about Kmart is that the variety is amazing. You can buy everything there. And there are certain combinations of things that you can buy at Kmart that you can't buy at other places. And there's certain things that if you buy them together, like if you buy certain things by themselves, nobody cares. But if you buy them in combinations, people kind of get a little freaked out. Like what? I like to go in there and go like, Hi, I need a jar of mayonnaise and a stopwatch and a Bible. I need a case of motor oil and a huffy 10-speed and a blonde wig. A road flare and a pair of pink panties. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. 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 Hi. Hey. 
My sister is so much deeper than me. She's just a, she's a deeper person, you know. Even as kids, mm -hmm. she was just an a older soul, you know. We were sitting at the breakfast table, and she said, uh, You know, Sarah, I think that the enemy of fear and tension is involvement. Right. I said, yeah. Grandma's fat. Went out to dinner last night at this really nice restaurant. The ladies' room is out of order. I had to use the men's room, which is so humiliating, you know? Sitting in that urinal. Oh. Dirty. Then I flush, now my back is all wet. Oh, I was, uh, licking jelly off of my boyfriend. And, uh, all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh my god, I'm turning into my mother. Mm. I talk during sex. I can't help it. It's like it's beyond my control. You know, it's, um, it just moves me to, you know, I always find myself talking during sex. I'm always saying stuff like, uh, ow, 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 ow. Easy, buddy. Dr. Katz's office. Laura. Hi, Ben. Laura, Laura, how are you? Ben, why are you calling? Well, you know, I was having a conversation with my dad this morning, and apparently he wants to, uh, maybe get into politics. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know whether it's going to be soon, but it looks like there's an opening for, uh, for the alderman position. Oh, great. That's exciting, huh? Really? Well, listen, this is, an, uh, this is more of a business call, not a social call, so I'm going to have to cut you off on the, uh, the chit-chat. All right, let's get down to business. We worked out some platforms this morning over breakfast, and uh, my idea was handicap parking for everyone. Yeah? I think you need for to all. think that through. Um, you know, I'll tell you something, Laura, it sounds glamorous, <laughs> Alderman, but it is a difficult position uh, that requires a lot of responsibility. Do you know what those responsibilities are? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. Like what? Well, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, uh, the verb to alder. Not really, actually. And that is a very complicated political process. Could you explain it to me? You know, I could, but, uh... You know, if I explained it to you, I would bore you, and uh, I don't want to jeopardize my dad's campaign. Mm. You know, I was a non-believer, too, when he first mentioned it. You know, in fact, I laughed right in his fat face. But now I see the upside to, uh, you know, running for alderman. What's that? Chicks love it. I think. I have a cough. Yeah. And uh, I had to get cough medicine for it this morning. I look in the back of the bottle. Mm -hmm. It said, keep away from children. Right. Which makes me so sad, you know, because I really, I love children. Yeah, I, I really don't want to subject myself to the kind of public humiliation, the kind of scrutiny that you uh, go through as soon as you... Uh, public try to enter public life. Public humiliation is a good thing. Yeah, but the things would come out of these things. You know, if I ran for office, all of a sudden... Oh, they, they would start to pry into your personal life. That's right. Yeah. Things would surface that I really would not... No, that's true. There's probably a lot of things in your past uh, that you probably don't want brought out as alderman. But, you know, I think, fortunately, when you're running for alderman, I don't think they pry that deeply. Believe me, they pry, Ben. Did you, um, what, what have you done that could potentially be ruinous to a campaign? Well, you don't have to pry. Them. Let them do it. No, I need to know this now, Dad, as your campaign Well, first manager. of all, I'm not running for anything. Well, if you were to run, is there something I should know about that you... There are a couple of things, that, a couple of affiliations I've had to organizations that, that are a little shady, you know. I saw a picture of you back in the 60s, and you were smoking a pipe. What was in that? Well, that's the kind of thing that would come up. I mean, I, uh, I already released that picture to the press. That's called a preemptive oh. move. Oh, that's a good idea. Put them on the defensive. Right. What I am doing yeah. is I am, exactly, I am putting the whole system on trial. Before, yeah. Bravo, bravissimo. Yeah. I really appreciate how supportive you're being now, and, and even entertaining the notion that it's something I could succeed at, I find very supportive and flattering. But guess what? What's that? I'm not interested. Well, Dad, honestly, if you run, you mm -hmm. will win. And not only you're going to win, yeah. we're going to win. Right? I like being a therapist, Ben. I like, I like who I am. Hey, I don't want to hear that kind of talk. Hey, wait a minute, that can be our slogan. <laughs> what? I don't want to hear that kind of talk. Isn't that kind of a long, dumb slogan? Long, dumb slogan. That's it. We don't need any long, dumb slogans.
Huh? See, everything you say is gold, Dad. You gotta go into politics. Goodbye, Ben. Goodbye, Ben! <laughs> You're into it! So, uh, so I've been traveling, I've been on the road a lot traveling, and, uh, you know, you kind of get lonely sure. when you're traveling, and you don't, uh, there's certain things that people might say to you that wouldn't bother you otherwise, but they stand out, you know, like I was at the airport, mm -hmm. and I'm checking in, and the lady said, uh, did you pack your bags yourself? I was like, well, yeah, it was just me in the room this morning, alone, and then she's like, did anyone give you anything to bring on the plane? No. Who's getting presents before they go on airplanes? I want to get a present. I don't think presents is the issue, Louie. And I kind of get nervous when I fly sometimes. We were, uh, I was flying from New York to San Francisco, and the pilot came on. Well, we were uh, sitting on the ground for like an hour because there was bad weather in San Francisco, so they wouldn't let us take off. Mm -hmm. And then the pilot comes on. Yeah. He goes, good evening, passengers. We have an idea up here in the cockpit. They won't let us take off to go to San Francisco, so we're going to say that we're going to Las Vegas, and halfway through, we'll switch. And we're all looking at each other, you know, like, what the hell is this? Don't pull a fast one on the safety guys. Like, we're all going, yeah, screw those, what do they know? Stick it to them. Yeah, I was wondering, Laura, actually, uh, later this afternoon, if you have time or after work, you would want to drop by the uh, campaign headquarters. Where is that? It's right here at the house. And what would we be doing there, Ben? You know, we would uh, we'd work on the campaign, and I made air quotes. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't. I'm saying you want to get on this political train, baby, and you don't want to get off. I mean, we are on a roll here. Don't you hear the phones ringing, Laura? No. No, oh, hold on one sec. You know what? Forget it. I'm not going to get it. The, uh, I'll forget I'll get it. Hey, Ben. You know what? No, I'm not going to get it because, you know, I've been working all morning and I am just sick and tired of the I'll get it hold on cats HQ oh man we have fun no honestly uh, I am um, kind of a new man here you know I mean I have more responsibilities I paint posters I have a staff of a one seven-year-old girl who lives upstairs who's helping me paint the posters and uh, she's doing a pretty damn good not the red it's weird relating to all the different kinds of people in America when you travel around. Like, I was in Maine. Right. And people up there have a weird accent. Like, I could hardly understand anybody that was... Anything that anybody was saying to me because the accent was so weird. Like, I went up to this guy in the gas station. I said, hello. And he said... <laughs> I was like, wow, that's like another language almost. Right. And in Minnesota, too, you know, the Minnesota accent. I went there, and I was just trying to get directions. I asked this lady, how do I get to the interstate? And she said, <laughs> So, I don't know. I, I need somebody to help me with that one. So, Dad, uh, what'd you do today? What didn't I do today? It's more like it. That's what I like to hear. I just need to know if you've had any subversive leanings. I am a subversive. You are. In, in the larger sense of the word. Right. And this country, Benjamin Daniel Katz, was built by subversives? No, Dad, they were uh, Puritans, I thought. Yeah, let me check. Yeah. All the great leaders of this country were subversive in some way. You think so? Yeah. Dad, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? See, those are two separate questions, Ben. And it didn't really seem like a party at the time. No, uh, yes. uh, dude, were you were you active in in college no, politics? You know, no, I, I, I was I, president of my class. Is that an appointed position? <laughs> no, I just don't. No, what? I just don't see you putting yourself on the line that way. What was your platform? I don't remember. I'll help you remember. Yeah, help me remember. Elect me, and you'll never blank, blank. in the blank again. <laughs> How about this? How about what do we want? Blank. When do we want it? Now. <laughs> What, what, would you, what would you have said then? Are we helping? <laughs> You're not helping. No. no. But you guys aren't political now, are you? I mean, I've never seen you. I never hear about this. You guys don't come in here talking about politics very much. Um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm sort of political. Really? Yeah. 
I wrote a paper called Social Politics. Uh huh. That was you? I read that. I think I read it. Did I say I wrote it? <laughs> you said you wrote it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant to say I read it. Oh, yeah. I was wondering yeah. if either of you feel sort of bad that you that you aren't still involved in politics in the way that you were when you were in college, and that's why you were just you know this is sort of like a. Sometimes I I, I miss that sense of uh, belonging. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. I actually I I was part of the uh, anti-war movement. Oh yeah, did you march? I marched, but I was always like ten minutes late. Mm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So you you didn't actually march. You were just like I marched near Washington. Mm. How close did you get? Uh, Bethesda. Did you guys, e- either of you, um, burn your draft cards? Yep. You did? But okay. speaking of burning, did you, at that time, did you, uh, it might have been a couple of years later. Oh, did you're you wondering burn, if I burned my bra. Did, did you burn your bra? No. I read about women doing that, but yeah. I never did it. You have a roast marshmallow? <laughs> Dad, I'm glad you're home. Exciting news today. Yeah? We have competition now. Who is that? I read in the paper today that there's another guy who is uh, apparently going to be running for alderman. So now we can uh, really get our talons in and start attacking this guy. Hey, I have some good news for you, too, exciting news. What's that? Uh, I made reservations for us in the real world. (laughs) What are you talking about? The real world is where you and I used to live until you got into this wacky oh, campaign mode. No. I'm not really interested in running for anything. I don't feel like I can play this game anymore, Ben. You know, I just, I just well, don't want to play. Dad, yeah. which game don't you want to play? The game where I'm running for office and you're my running mate or my campaign manager. Right. I like it better when we were just a couple of guys. Just a father uh, and a son. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think that you have a taste for the political yeah. life now. It's in your blood. I mean, a little bit. I think I've been a pretty decent campaign manager. You, you've been better than decent. You have been, you have been superb, and yeah. I think that you could make somebody a very good campaign manager, mm. provided they were interested in running for office. Yeah. You know, that's one of the requirements. Well, I just thought that this is a good opportunity for you to get get something else going in your life, to start believing in stuff. I believe in stuff, man. You know, and then, uh, you know, the politics is a, uh, is, is a good way to reach people. And uh, You know what else isn't bad is the phone. Yeah. We're not even in politics, and you know how many times I've lied today? How many times? Oh, my God, like a hundred. Just to practice. Yeah. You know, even the greatest politicians of our time lied. Really? Even Lincoln. What was his nickname? Honest Abe. Well, maybe that's not a good example. <laughs> What about the guy after Lincoln? Washington? No, I doubt it. Washington was the first president. Oh, I thought you meant alphabetically. Yeah, I already, I, actually today, yeah. I drained the campaign fund. <laughs> did, you, did you put it in an IOU? What's that? No, I went to the arcade. Wait, you took our campaign fund? It was only $120. Yeah. We're, but, uh, man, did I dump that off quick. It was like two hours at the arcade, but guess what I won you? What's up? This. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's right, I played skeet ball. Oh, I had to uh I had to end a relationship with a girlfriend of mine. It was sad, you know, we'd been friends for a long time, but she changed, you know. Yeah. She uh she's a um oh, what is it? I not born again Christian, but oh, pathological liar. My sister just got married. That's great. It was fun. It was a neat wedding. You know, they took each other's last names and hyphenated it. So mm-hmm. now my sister's name is Susan Silverman Abramowitz. But uh, they're going to shorten it, you know, to just uh, Jews. Yeah. Fits on the mailbox. Sure. My father was at the wedding, and that was really, uh, it was awkward for me. It was uncomfortable, I guess, because uh, when I was 14, I went out with my father's best friend. Really? And, uh... That's embarrassing, you know, my father having a 14-year-old best friend. A loser. I had a gay dream the other night. This was really weird, Dr. Katz. I had a, a gay dream, and I didn't know I was having a gay dream mm-hmm. until partway through. See, here's, here's what it was, the dream. I'm, I was at a cafe in Italy with a friend of mine. And we're sitting there and having espressos and... Yeah, gay dream. These two young Italian boys come up to us. 
They say, come swimming with us. We're going to go swimming. Come on, it's going to be very nice to go swimming. And, you know, it's a dream. So we're like, yeah, what the hell? Why not, you know? Go swimming with these Italian kids. So I get on the back of the kid's scooter there, and we go, you know, go into the mountains. And uh, so th they take off their clothes, and they start swimming in there. And they sang to us, come on into the water. It's beautiful. Don't be afraid, you know. So we're starting to get undressed, and I asked my friend, is this gay, do you think? to swim with Italian teenage boys. And my friend was like, no, of course not. And I said, yeah, you're right. Anyway, so I'm making out with one of them, you know, like kissing him, and it hit me all at once. Of course this is gay. Whoops. What the hell was I thinking? You know what the music means, Louis. This is totally gay. It's time to stop. Our time is up.